Environmental flows describe the flows of water required to sustain a river's ecosystems. Our job is to protect the natural flows because all waterways are unique, complex, and dynamic systems. We can use environmental flows to mimic the natural flow pattern of a river and balance the water needs of both society and the environment. Water connects us to the environment. We rely on it for power generation. We extract it for agriculture and industry. We use it for recreation. We alter its flow with dams and stormwater drainage. And it is further impacted by climate change. These uses can affect a river's flow and its ability to sustain wildlife and the communities that depend on it. A river's natural flow pattern changes seasonally and produces various types of flow events. An overbank flow breaches river banks, transports sediment and nutrients, and revitalizes shallow channels. A high flow is usually short in duration and can occur during a rainstorm. It can trigger the movement, birth, and expansion of many species throughout the watershed and replenish reservoirs and groundwater. The base flow is the most common state of a river. Fertile land is exposed, allowing plants to flourish. In times of very low flow, the ecosystem and community compete for very little water. That is when an ecosystem-based flow can be used to help reduce the conflict. Human water use has moved water systems away from their natural flows. By using environmental flows, we can better reflect the river's natural flow, resulting in healthier watersheds and healthier communities. Our understanding of environmental flows is based on the analysis of five key components. Hydrology, geomorphology, biology, water quality, and connectivity. Hydrology describes the movement of water over time. Hydrology affects all of the other key components and is the most sensitive to climate change. Geomorphology describes the shape and composition of stream channels. It also describes physical processes such as erosion and sediment deposition. Biology describes the ecological functions and life cycles of the plants, animals, fish, and insects who make up the ecosystem. Water quality describes the physical, chemical, and biological makeup of the water. It's a measure of the living and non-living elements present in a watercourse. Connectivity refers to the movement of organisms, energy, and matter through a river system. It is intimately linked with impacts that natural and man-made barriers have on a river system. We need to consider river systems as a whole and use our understanding of environmental flows to ensure the long-term health of our rivers, ecosystems, and communities.